It's quite a process to go from here to here. And University of Regina research expertise is playing an important role along the way. Both Regina and Moose Jaw get their tap water from Buffalo Pound Lake. But before it makes its way into your glass, it first has to undergo a purification process at the Buffalo Pound Water Treatment Corporation. I, I love tap water. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> there is a lake pumping station located exactly three kilometers uh, north of here. And uh, that's drawing up uh, water from Buffalo Pound Lake. That water is chlorinated. That process is lengthy and produces a lot of costly waste. The water then undergoes several different processes to be further cleaned and purified. One step includes adding a coagulant to the water, which causes both inorganic and organic particles to clump together into much bigger, more visible particles called flock particles. The larger the flock particle, the more dense it becomes, and the much easier it is to settle out or float out uh, further down in the treatment process, which dramatically helps to clean up uh, the water uh, and is the first process in making um, questionable water quality into high quality water that consumers will eventually consume. Eventually that flock settles down and accumulates uh, uh, by gravity at the bottom of these clarifiers. And from there, uh, every, every few minutes, uh, some of that, that sludge is then sent out to our sludge lagoons. And you can see behind me, there's a lot of material called sludge that is produced as a result of cleaning up the water, making it potable and drinkable for the 230,000 residents of the cities of Regina and Moose Jaw. But this material creates a problem for us. University of Regina Faculty of Engineering Associate Professor, Dr. Zheng Kai Shua, has teamed up with the Buffalo Pound Water Treatment Corporation to research sustainable uses for this waste material. This alum sludge is very costly to deal with. The treatment plant has to spend like over $1 million every year just to dry the sludge and haul it to landfill. It's not environmentally friendly and it, it, it is very costly. So we are working with the treatment facility, try to convert this waste material, this sludge material, into a um, uh, ceramicite, which is a ceramics-like material. And that can be made with several different um, uh, physical chemical features, such as more pores or higher mechanical strength, right? Or stronger absorption capacity for pollutants. Higher concentrations of phosphorus in the water body will cause uh, excessive growth of uh, blue-green algae in the water, cause the so-called algae bloom. But by using this uh, ceramicite material to absorb accumulated phosphorus uh, and, and remove the phosphorus from the water. So uh, our preliminary result has indicated that some, this material can effectively remove over 90% of the phosphorus from our water within a very short period of time. In addition to that, this material can also be used to remove other pollutants, for example, uh, microplastics. If this material is used for phosphorus removal, once it's saturated or once it's spent, we are not going to waste it. It can be sold to customers as a landscaping mulch, which carries uh, fertilizers. And uh, this material can slowly release phosphorus back into soil, and which is definitely beneficial to uh, the, uh, the plants, right? So uh, that's the whole idea. So this, this fits the uh, uh, circular economy strategy very well. Dr. Shua sees tremendous upsides to the waste produced from making clean, drinkable water for many of Saskatchewan's residents. To learn more about this research and more, visit discoursemagazine.ca.